Okay, this is the last section in chapter six on trig functions. And here we look at the inverse trig functions. And in a way, you could think of these a bit like sine inverse, the graph of sine inverse, the graph of cos inverse, and the graph of tan inverse. So strictly speaking, it's not absolutely that, but it gives you an idea. And the reason these are not the same is because you'll see that this is only a bit of the inverse graph. Now to get a graph of an inverse, you would have done this already, to get the graph of an inverse, you reflect the original graph in the line y equals x. Now if we did that we would actually end up with graphs that don't stop here but this would carry on like this. Yeah? Like that. This would carry on like this. Yeah? The same with the tan graph. It would actually carry on like this. But there's actually a problem when we carry on those graphs, it means that they're not functions. And a function can't be a graph that sort of basically can't go back over itself. So we chop them off. And actually, these types of questions uh, you can work out in your calculator. We, don't we do that in a moment because your, your calculator basically does the same thing. Now, notice that the x and the y axis are swapped over so the angle is on this axis and the value of that angle is on the x-axis so the angle is here in radians and the value of that angle so the cos of that angle is on this axis so it, it's like swapped around because normally when you see your graphs you see the angle theta would be on that axis and then for example sine theta would be on that axis this is the other way around so basically you could think of this as theta and this one as being sine theta yeah so they're, they're swapped around um, yeah and the other important thing is that it's in radians yeah whenever you're asked to work out one of these um, arc tan, arc sine, or arc cos, it's radians, yeah? So that's that's another difference between the normal sine inverse, tan inverse, and cos inverse, is that the arc inverse is always, or the arc function is always in radians. Okay, this one's pretty straightforward. It's asking us to sketch that graph. Uh, that sketch is down here. It will always look like that. Okay, these are not in the formula book, so um, you do need to memorize these graphs. Yes, yeah, so know what they look like. Um, know the important numbers on the axis remember that they're in radians and it's just a matter of reproducing those graphs uh, you may be asked about a translation you may get a question where you've got like a translation that you need to do of one of these graphs so it's just about memorizing them and sometimes you get questions like this um, the easiest way is just to work them out on your calculator yeah because your calculator will give you the right answer just make sure that your calculator is in radians so make sure you go to your angle unit change it to radians and just do for the first one for example the sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 and i get uh, minus pi over 4 negative pi over 4 Let's put that in. So negative pi over 4. 
it's useful to know how to use your graph to work it out. So basically what we've done is minus root two over two, something like that, and we've gone down and basically read off what that value is. Yeah, that's how we would use the graph, but you can't really read off from the graph. You just use your calculator. Next one, in radians, the cos inverse of negative one is just pi. So probably this one we could do on the graph. If you go to negative one, read off, actually it goes right to the top. Yeah, it's pi. And the last one, the tan inverse of root three is pi over three or third pi. So pi over three. And if we were using the graph, we'd never get the exact value from the graph. It's basically saying, okay, let's go to root three, go off and read that off. And that's, that's the pi over three there. Yes, yeah, so it's basically what's, what's going on. But your calculator will always give you the correct value. But it's useful to know how to work these out without a calculator. Okay, so the graphs are there for reference. You can pause it, keep those graphs on the screen so that you can now do exercise 6C on page 160.